Today marks the third month of my pregnancy. I've been in and out of the hospital for the past few months and am suffering from a deep, lingering depression. It all started when I climbed Mount San Cristobal. Let's put the Devil's Mountain to the test on this hike, Kyle said. He was president of our hiking club. We met on a mountain and fell in love on a mountain, not knowing it would all end on a mountain. On this hike, we were joined by our close friend, Alan. He was a cheeky fellow who enjoyed playing practical jokes on us. However, he was warned not to do so on this expedition. Mount San Cristobal is a potentially active volcano located between the provinces of Laguna and Quezon on Luzon Island and is located beside Mount Banahao, otherwise known as the Sacred Mountain by locals. There have been myths concerning both mountains. One is a source of terror, while the other is a path to salvation. Our van was stopped for inspection. A police officer greeted us with an ominous warning. Mount Cristobal is called the Devil's Mountain for a reason. If I were you, I wouldn't proceed on this journey. He held his hand out to feel the rain. See? It's raining even though the sun is shining. Believe me, I have seen this all before. Alan proceeded to laugh. The officer was visibly irritated. So he explained that three tourists had gone missing while hiking in the mountain just last week. He looked at our travel documents, then returned them, then whispered to us, If you get lost, Turn your shirts inside out. The hike hadn't fully started yet, when peculiar things occurred. Hmm? Kyle found a big hairy caterpillar inside his bag when he was getting bug spray. He suspected that Alan put it there, so he reminded him not to joke around. Alan just shrugged <sighs> his shoulders in confusion. As we hiked up the trail, the rainforest on Mount San Cristobal sent chills down my spine, with its moss-covered ancient trees and gloomy fog. We stumbled across a terrifying sign hanging on a baleti tree that warned us the region was haunted by spirits, and that we must be respectful. <laughs> Alan laughed. He was sure that it had been placed there by locals to frighten visitors and make the mountain more eerie. However, he stopped laughing when he felt something on his neck. I looked at his neck and found several black and brown leeches. These are blood-sucking limatic, he said as he tried to remove and stomp on them. I was concerned about his neck. Some areas appeared bruised. I caught Kyle looking at me as I was applying cream on Alan's neck. I sensed he was becoming jealous, so I teasingly proceeded to lightly stroke our friend's neck. After a few hours, we decided to rest and have dinner. Alan forgot the discomfort and set up his hammock. I went near Kyle as he was setting up our tent. I embraced him from behind, but he immediately turned away. This led Alan to tease us with a song. He suddenly stopped singing when some stones were thrown near our tent. Alan was suspicious. Maybe some locals were playing tricks on us. Kyle tried to find the source of the stones, but didn't find anything. It was dark, so we relied on the campfire. We cooked some food and ate while Alan hung out in his hammock. He wasn't interested in dinner because of the pain in his neck. I stopped chewing when more stones were thrown at us. Kyle instantly glanced around. Alan was still in his hammock, asleep, so it wasn't him. Then, beyond the baleti trees, I spotted a weird shadow. I tried to point it out, but it quickly vanished. Kyle pulled out his Swiss army knife and walked over to the trees. 
Nothing was there. However, I noticed the shadow again. It moved quickly from one tree to the next, along with the sound of thunderous thumps. The noise woke up Alan, and he pulled out his knife. We decided to leave the area. We were certain someone was hiding in the trees. And I felt like someone was following us, since I could still hear faint thuds nearby. After wandering around for a while, we came upon an abandoned hut and went inside. The floor was made of bamboo sticks that squeaked whenever we stepped on it. The leaves on the roof were already loose, allowing us to see the full moon through them. We decided to sleep there for the night. As I was laying down, I saw the shadow again and realized it seemed human, but not quite at the same time. Kyle and Alan didn't see the shadow, but heard the heavy thumps. So we left the hut and looked for help. We traveled for almost an hour and didn't encounter anyone. All we could hear was the sound of crickets, along with the heavy thuds following us. We then arrived at the same abandoned hut and realized we were lost and going around in circles. I remembered what the police officer told us, so I turned my shirt inside out. After I finished, I assisted Kyle. When I turned to Alan, he declined. Alan was breathing heavily. He dropped to his knees, exhausted. Go ahead, I'll catch up later. We should stop here and let Alan rest. No, let him rest here. We'll get help once we reach the base. Go on, I'll be fine. I just need a few minutes. With a sigh of relief, we could now see the nearest town in the distance. And noticed something staring at us. Sure enough, there it was. Sitting beneath a huge baladi tree. A giant, human-like figure with the head of a horse. Its eyes were burning with rage as it stood on its hind legs. It had two abnormally long arms and two long slender legs. Surrounding its body was dark smoke that smelled like sulfur. I could even taste the acidity of the smoke from where I stood. We were petrified. The creature slowly walked towards us. It was gigantic. We were overwhelmed by its presence, certain that we would die. Kyle dropped to the floor as his legs gave out. I was crying, praying to God to help us. The creature <laughs> laughed at us. It looked at me with its massive, fiery eyes and licked its lips. You will be my wife. It continued laughing. Its voice was thunderous. The creature pointed at Kyle, revealing its razor-sharp claws. You have no use for me. I will kill you later. Try to outrun me. Go. Kyle immediately pulled himself up. He glanced at me and ran falling several times on his way down the hiking trail. I was left there, alone, not knowing what to do. I already accepted death as the quickest solution. The creature jumped and was now on top of me. I choked at the smoke coming from its body and lost consciousness. I was completely out of it when I woke up. I didn't even remember how I got out of the forest. All I knew was I got up and walked for hours. I vaguely remember having crossed paths with some of the villagers at the foot of the mountain. Each one gasped in terror as if they had seen a ghost. I kept walking until a village elder approached me. She was carrying a towel and covered me up. I didn't realize that I was bottomless and bleeding which explained the look on villagers' faces. 
The elder brought me to her house and told me she was an albulario. After giving me clothes, she took a chicken and slit its throat while uttering some words that appeared to be a prayer. Without asking what happened to me, she told me I was attacked by a thick balang, a half-man, half-horse demon. The only way to end this is the next time it comes to you, ride it and pluck the golden hair from its nape. Many police and locals arrived to look for my companions in the forest. I learned from police officers that Alan's pale body was attacked by more leeches and Kyle was drowned in a shallow creek, not far from where I fainted. As I was carried inside an ambulance, the albulario whispered that it wasn't over. The Tikbalang will come back for you and your son. 